Hey, this is Mike Matthews from Muscle for Life and Legion Athletics. And in this video podcast, I want to talk about testosterone and muscle growth and fat loss. How much of a difference does testosterone make? How big of a difference is there between, let's say, lower testosterone levels and higher testosterone levels in terms of muscle growth and fat loss? So the first thing that needs to be said is that it matters. Of course it does. Testosterone is the primary hormonal driver of muscle growth, and it's also generally associated with leanness, meaning that generally speaking, the higher your testosterone levels are, the leaner you are going to be, and the more resistant to fat gain you are going to be. And these effects can be pretty dramatic. In one study, the subjects received testosterone exogenously, so like anabolic steroids, and they gained muscle and lost fat without exercising, without doing anything. The testosterone alone was enough to put muscle on their body and strip away some body fat. And then of course you look around on Instagram and you see a lot of guys, you see a lot of girls that are clearly on drugs and are very big, very lean, uh, usually also eating a lot of food. And so most people assume then that the higher your testosterone is, the better you're gonna be able to gain muscle and the better you're gonna be able to lose fat and the leaner you're gonna be, period. And that's not exactly true. You see, it's true if you are dramatically raising your testosterone levels, which requires anabolic steroids. Yes, if you inject enough testosterone into your body, you are going to dramatically increase your potential for muscle building and fat loss. Yes, that's true. And this, of course, is why many people use steroids and why many people who don't want to use steroids take testosterone boosting supplements instead, which do nothing, by the way, don't waste your money. Now, something the latter group, the people who don't want to use steroids and who are trying to increase their testosterone through eh, not always just supplementation, but also lifestyle. And usually it's like little biohack type things. What those people don't know is that one, uh, you're not going to impact your, your testosterone levels much. Um, with diet, lifestyle, with anything natural, unless you have some sort of nutritional deficiency, unless something is seriously wrong, unless something is really missing from your diet and your life, you're not going to be able to impact your testosterone levels significantly through anything related to diet or supplementation or lifestyle. And even if you could, if we put a number to it, so let's say you could increase your testosterone levels by 20% through various natural interventions. And that would be, that would be impressive. Let's say even 30%, right? That would be very impressive. Even if you could do that, it's really not going to make that much of a difference. If any difference at all in terms of muscle growth. So for example, if your testosterone right now is, let's say it's right down the middle and you have normal testosterone levels. Uh, you're a guy my age, I'm 33. And let's say, let's say my testosterone is 600 NGDL and I would be able to increase that by 30%, right? So I'll be able to bump that up to about 800. I might feel a little bit better. I might feel a little bit more peppy. I might have a little bit more sex drive, but I am not going to see any difference in terms of muscle building. And that's not just my opinion, of course. This has been shown in multiple scientific studies. For example, one was conducted by the Charles R. Drew University of Science and Medicine. And what they did in that study is they gave young, healthy men varying amounts of a form of testosterone, exogenous testosterone, anabolic steroid, and also a drug that inhibits testosterone production. So, of course, what these drugs allow the researchers to do is to stratify these people according to, to testosterone levels. So they were able to take some people and stick them at like the low of the physiological normal range and then put some in the middle, put some at the high point, and then put some way beyond that, way beyond the point that you would ever see naturally. And after 20 weeks of the injections and then also doing various muscle related tests of like one rep max strength and muscle activation and leg power, using exercises like the leg press, for example, what the scientists found is that so long as testosterone is in the physiological normal range of about 300 NGDL or nanograms per deciliter to about 1000 NGDL, there's really not that much of a difference uh, in terms of muscle growth. Now, where they did see a significant increase in muscle growth was in the group with supraphysiological, so beyond the, the physiological normal range, the people whose testosterone levels were up around 2,400 NGDL, which is uh, about double anything you'd ever see naturally. Yes, 
that does increase muscle growth significantly. Now, this study does have a limitation that the subjects were not exercising. And if you were to add exercise into it, the effects, of course, would have been larger. But the relationships would have been about the same. And that has been shown in other steroid literature. For example, researchers at Maastricht University published an extensive review of steroid literature back in 2004. And what they found is that most steroid users gain about four and a half to 11 pounds of muscle in their first 10 weeks of using the drugs. And the absolute most muscle gain that they found was about 15 and a half pounds over six weeks. And so what you're looking at is at the high, at the high end of muscle gain, that's pretty impressive. 15 and a half pounds in six weeks. You can't do that naturally ever, but you have other people who were maybe just lower responders to drugs. And for one reason or another, they didn't gain that much muscle while on steroids. It didn't make that big of a difference. Again, if you're gaining four and a half pounds of muscle over 10 weeks, that's not that impressive. Like somebody new to weightlifting can probably do that. Um, so my point with that is if you take steroids and if that won't necessarily skyrocket your muscle growth, what can you really hope to achieve by increasing your testosterone by small amounts? If doubling or tripling your testosterone levels doesn't necessarily make that big of a difference, or at least not as much of a difference as many people think. You know, many people think that within your first steroid cycle, you're going to look like the, the Instagram fitness model, not the case. Yes, you will gain muscle faster, but if it's not going to be like that, then what could you possibly hope to get out of, you know, going from 400 NGDL to 500 NGDL? Now that said, if you were to get your hormones tested and you were very low, let's say you're really at the bottom of the physiological normal and you could do things to get that significantly up. If you could, if you could go from, let's say two or 300 NGDL to like six, seven, 800 NGDL, that is going to make a difference. You're going to feel a lot better and you will gain muscle and strength faster. Now, how much faster? It's hard to say. It's not going to be simply like, oh, you went from 200 to 800, you're going to gain muscle four times faster. No, it's not going to be four times faster, but you know, it is, you, you are going to gain muscle and gain strength faster if you can make a big change in your testosterone levels. Okay. So that's testosterone and muscle building. Let's now talk about testosterone and fat loss. Now in this case, fluctuations in the physiological normal range do seem to matter there does seem to be a clear association between lower testosterone levels. Again, we're talking about that physiologically normal range of about 300 NGDL to about 1000 NGDL. So if you're on the lower end, you will tend to be fatter than people who are in the middle. And those people will tend to be fatter than people who are at the high end of normal. And we can see evidence of this in the study that I cited from the Charles R. Drew University of Medicine and Science, because over that 20 week period, the participants body composition was changing. And what researchers found is that the guys who had the lowest testosterone levels uh, ended up quite a bit fatter than the guys who had the highest testosterone levels. So for example, when researchers took guys whose natural testosterone levels were around 600 NGDL and they cut them in half, they dropped them to about 300 NGDL over the course of that 20 week period, they saw a 36% increase in total body fat mass. That's a lot. Now the exact mechanisms behind this weren't understood, weren't fully explained, but we do know that testosterone can directly inhibit the creation of fat cells. And we also know that low testosterone is a contributing factor to obesity. And we also have a lot of anecdotal evidence to back this up. If you speak with any long-term steroid users who also know what they're doing with their diet, they'll tell you that it is much easier to stay lean when they are on cycle, when their testosterone levels are very high. And they also see a lot less fat gain regardless of what they do with their diet when they're on cycle than, you know, versus off cycle. They have to be more careful with their diet when they're off cycle because they notice that they gain fat easier and tend to just store more fat on the whole. So for those of us who don't want to do steroids though, what can we take away from this? Well, doing everything that we can naturally to optimize our hormones is not only just a good idea for general health, but it also can help us stay as lean as possible as easily as possible. 
And if you want to learn more about what does and doesn't work to naturally increase testosterone levels and how to naturally maximize your testosterone production, just click on the link up here and you'll be taken to an article or maybe a video. If I, I think I've recorded a video, if I have a video on this, which I think I do, I'll link to that, but you'll be taken to a video and an article where I talk about it. And that's it for the video. So I hope you liked it. If you did, please do give it a like and please do drop a comment down below and let me know what you thought. And also share any of your experiences with testosterone and muscle growth and fat loss, high testosterone, low testosterone, steroids, testosterone boosters, whatever. Let us know. I'm curious to hear from you. And last but not least, if you want to know when my next video goes live and if you want to also make me happy, then click the red subscribe button down below. It's free, of course, and then click the little bell next to it and YouTube will give you a little notification when my next video goes up. All right, thanks for the time and I will see you in the next video.